I have discovered a universal principle in my life. And that is the more I think about me and the more I look at my track record and my strength and my perfection, the more depressed I become, the, the weaker I feel, the more dismal my life is. And we can see the same principle in the story of Samson. Uh, Samson, he gets married. Uh, he does not marry a godly woman. He goes after a pagan woman who doesn't serve God. And his wedding is a disaster. Uh, ends up leaving in the wedding. He doesn't even marry his wife. And when he comes back, he finds out that she's with another man. And he he flips out. And, and he does some crazy things. And then the enemies, his Philistines, they, they kill his wife and his new father-in-law. And then Samson kills some more people. And there's this, this back and forth. And then, and then he ends up going and lives in a cave. Now think about how Samson's feeling. He's all alone in a cave. Uh, he's, he's not with the people of his country because he can't trust them. He's not with his mom and dad because probably he's very ashamed. They said, please don't marry this girl. It's only going to bring pain and suffering. And he said, I know better. And then it only brought pain and suffering. So he's not with his family. He's not with his countrymen. He's not with his new family because they're dead. I mean, they were killed in a horrific way. Um, he's hiding for his life. Um, he's got to be feeling really, really low. And then to make matters worse, the Philistines come to capture him. Um, but they don't even come to get him. The men of Judah who talk to the Philistines, who are their oppressors, say, hey, why are you here? And they said, well, we're here for Samson. Um, he's fighting us and, and we don't like him. We want him. And they say, hey, hey, we'll go get him for you. So the men of Judah go to Samson and say, hey, listen, the bad guys are here and they want you. We're just going to betray you and give you over to them. Um, in fact, we want to we wanna tie you up and just deliver you to the enemies. So just think about how Samson's feeling as he's, he's bound with these ropes, surrounded by his brothers who are bringing him to the very people who burned his wife and father-in-law, who have destroyed his, the freedom of his nation, who hate him, and who are getting ready to torture him and kill him. That's pretty low. And then there's this huge shift and it says the spirit of the lord now the spirit of the lord shows up there's a great verse in the new old Te in the new testament that says where the spirit of the lord is there's liberty there's freedom you see god never forces and coerces anyone he always empowers us he inspires us he enlivens us and here you have samson who is alone betrayed tied up, being ready to be delivered to his enemies by his friends and family. And the Spirit of the Lord shows up. And it says, the ropes fell off of his arms like flax in a fire. All of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord comes on Samson, and he is filled with immense strength. Now, Ellen White tells us that, that Samson's physical appearance was not like the rock. He wasn't massive with huge muscles. It was the spirit of God. So when someone looked at Samson, he looked like a normal, regular guy. But then he could do crazy strong things. And so the ropes fall off of him and the Philistines are there and they're coming forward and they're going to they're gonna start beating on Samson. And he looks for something to fight with. And there is a skeleton of a donkey. And he picks up a donkey's jawbone, which is kind of in the shape of an L or, or a boomerang. And he holds it and then he just wails into these Philistines and starts clubbing and hitting and fighting. And the men of Judah do nothing. You see, every other judge led Israel's armies. Samson was a one-man army. You see, many times when we're trying to do the right thing, we want support. We want people to follow us. We want people to pat us on the back and agree with us and go with us. But God says, I am enough. We can do great things, just you and me. And so Samson tears into these guys. He kills over a thousand men with a, a bone, a donkey's jawbone. And then here's the thing. When the battle's over, he 
falls to his knees, faint with thirst. In fact, he cries out to God, are you going to let me die of thirst? You see, many times after our greatest victories, we are immediately humbled. Because Samson could not look at all the piles, the heaps and heaps of bodies around him and say, I'm amazing. No, he needed to look at God and to remind him of that. God allowed his body to be faint with thirst. And notice this, the men of Judah again do nothing. Samson has just delivered them from this mighty army and they don't even give him a drink of water. We don't even know where they are. Do they run off during the battle? Are they just standing there stupidly watching this whole thing? We know no one was man enough to step up and join in. Samson was all by himself, except he had God. And now here he is, dying of thirst. And he calls out to God. He says a very childish prayer of faith. Jesus said, faith of a child. And God opens up the ground and water comes out. You see, God did that miracle for the children of Israel in the desert. And he did the same miracle for one child of Israel, Samson, and the battlefield. You see, when we look at the story of Samson, we think about Samson, the superhero, and the guy who had trouble with women. But really what we need to do is think about the story and see, this is what God can do with someone. God gave him immense strength. He gave him immense bravery. He gave him huge victories. He even opened up the ground and gave him water. How good is God? So whether we are in the cave all by ourselves, or we're being betrayed by our friends and family, or we're in the midst of the fight for our lives, or we're dying of thirst, God is with us. God's got this. You see, the story of Samson is a story of pain and suffering. The Bible says, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. And Samson did not guard his heart. He went after a Philistine woman, and that marriage caused tons of misery. Then he went and visited a prostitute, and that caused the beginning of the downfall of his leadership. And then he went and stayed with Delilah, and he literally lost his connection to God and his immense strength. He lost his eyesight. He lost everything. His greatest victory resulted in his death when he knocked the temple down, and it came crashing on him. You see, God's will always comes about. The, 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 the purpose of Samson's life was fulfilled, but he had a choice. He could choose to fulfill it through pain and suffering or through obedience and blessing. And unfortunately, Samson chose pain and suffering. But even though he was stupid and chose pain and suffering, God worked with him. God was merciful to him. God gave him strength. God delivered him. God is so good. So stop looking at yourself saying, man, I'm amazing. I just had this huge victory. I'm so strong and awesome. Because that leads to dumb choices. Samson was feeling good and he went and saw a prostitute. He was feeling good and he stayed with Delilah even after she betrayed him three times. He still stayed with her because he felt strong enough. But the opposite is also true. When you're feeling betrayed by your family, all alone, like life couldn't get any worse, and you just want to sit on a, on a heap of stones and cry, God is there, and he can deliver you. He can open up the ground and give you living water. He can fill your arms with strength, and the ropes, the addictions, the depression that's holding you down will just fall off your hands like nothing, because God's got this. So stop looking at yourself and your strengths or your weaknesses. Stop looking at your victories and your failures and look up. At the end of time, God's people are going to have nothing to hold on to except faith in God. We're not going to have our money. We're not going to have our influence. We're not going to have our nice stuff. We're not even going to have each other, maybe. But we will have God. And now is the time before the storm comes. I mean, look at pictures of California. It's, it's burning down. All the smoke is everywhere. It's crazy. Look at, look at the way things are going in the world. Now is the time where we connect to God and we stop looking at ourselves and looking at everyone around us and look 
at God because he is the only one who's going to get us through the storm that's coming. He's the only one that's going to get us through the storm that we're facing right now. He's the only one that's going to pull us up out of self-loathing or pull us down out of prideful arrogance. God is so good. And when we look at the story of Samson, we see that he can give us the strength that we need. He can give us the water that we need. He can give us the victories that we need. And it's all in his timing. So today, today, look up. Today, choose to believe that whether you're in the cave or you're tied up or you're on the hill of victory, trust in God because he's got this. God bless.